Welcome to another ACDI technical training. Today we are going to be going over PaperCut's newest print management solution in the cloud, PaperCut Hive. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin, let's ask ourselves, what is PaperCut Hive? As mentioned before, Hive is a PaperCut's cloud-based print management solution. Built on the same platform as PaperCut Pocket, it provides all of the same functionality and ease of use along with the added ability to embed most major multifunctional devices. Newly designed and built from scratch, this new cloud-based solution is built with security first principles for ease of use and with the leveraging of IoT technology, eliminates the need to have an on-premise print server. And now that you know what PaperCut Hive is, you may want to ask yourself, who is PaperCut Hive for? PaperCut Hive fits really well into many environments, but it really shines brightest in small and medium business marketplace. This holds especially true in businesses with no professional IT staff or services. Now, let's think for a moment. Why is that? What problems does it solve? PaperCut Hive provides the functionality of being able to control access to printers, tracks printing, copying, and scanning. It also has secure hold and release printing, and more. There is no need for any extra hardware or a print server to be on premise. And because of the edge mesh technology, the printing environment is self healing. There's also the added benefit of the paper cut team themselves who are constantly improving and growing their product. And now that we know a little bit more about hive, let's take a look at the product itself. So the first thing that we're going to want to go ahead and do is navigate to hive.papercut.com and there we will find a sign up sheet to sign up as a user. Now you're going to want to click on the invite that is sent to you to log on as an administrator, but I've already gone ahead and done this step. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the login screen. And here I'm just going to log in with my credentials. And once I've entered those credentials, it'll go ahead and take me to the welcome screen. And I'm going to go ahead and click get started and I'm ready. So basically what we're going to be doing first is downloading an edge node. And while that executable runs, we're going to be transferred over to the discovering printers uh, prompt. Now automatically on standard mode, it's just going to be looking for printers in your subnet, but we can go into expert mode. And I know the subnet where our printers are at already. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in that um, subnet uh, with the forward slash 24 so that I could see everything within um, that 255.255.255.0 mask. And I'm going to click update there. Now it does normally take a little bit of time in order for those printers to be discovered, especially on bigger networks. So I'm going to go ahead and run the executable while we're waiting for some of the printers to get discovered. Now, luckily there is nothing too complicated on this executable. Uh, so when we're installing an edge node, we can basically next through most of the prompts and it will go ahead and finish updating in the background. So once the installer finishes running, the window will go ahead and disappear and we can circle back to our printer discovery and see if any printers have been found. So after we give it some time, we'll see that the count of discovered printers goes up. So once we get to a good point, I'll go ahead and hit continue. And here we see that we're going to send our first invitation to ourselves. Um, now this is just a generic email that we use to set up an admin account. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my email account and I'm going to send it directly to myself. So I'm going to click send and we should be getting that message here soon. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and click on the let's go button. And here it's letting us know that we should check our email. Um, but there's also a little guided tour. So let's just go through that really quick while we're waiting for the email to get here. Um, so it lets us see how we can take control and configure paper cut hive, how we can invite more users. And here it's just showing us that PaperCut Hive can also be used as a tool to kind of monitor where 
your ink and toner is at and also a forecast of how many reams of paper you need. So now I'm going to go ahead and go over to my email and look for the invite that was sent to me from Paper Cut Hive. And here's the email that I got. And as you can see, there's a QR code for identity. There's also my access code there. But I'm going to click Get Started. And here's telling me to go ahead and download the Paper Cut Hive Edge node. So I'm going to go ahead and download that and run through the installer. Again, there's nothing special with this installer. Just run through it. Once it finishes installing, I'll go ahead and prompt us to download the app on our phone. Now I had done this previously, so it looks like I had downloaded it, but I'm going to show you what that process looks like. So just open up the camera on your phone. We scan the code, click on the link and hit install either on uh, the Play Store or the uh, Apple App Store, just depending on what phone system you have. And here it's downloading Hive. We're going to go ahead and open it. And it should just say, hey, let's allow notifications. Uh, give it the proper permissions. Hit continue. And there you go. We're complete. And now what we have to do is print something. So let's take a look at how to print. Just depending on your operating system, you're going to get different prompts on how you will be able to print as a user. So I'm going to go ahead and print a simple job. And as you notice, we now have a paper cut printer uh, print queue. Um, I'm going to change this to one page and hit print. Uh, just keep in mind that when you're using Hive, you're going to want to use that paper cut printer print queue to send all of your jobs. So back to the phone. Now we should be able to see the job in our queue. And I'm going to go ahead and tap on this print job. And as you can see, there's certain features on here and certain pieces of information. But I'm just going to click on print. And then on the list of printers, I'm going to choose a print queue that's really close by me, that uh, C3320 is close. So I hit print, and it says it's all done. And as you can see, it's printing and printing successfully. And Going back to the paper cut Hive web interface, I'll go ahead and click on that. If we go to our job log, uh, well, let me go ahead and click close here. Oh, well, before I even able to click close, the job shows up. Um, so we know we're good. And when we click close, as you can see, since the job has showed up, we have a little celebratory screen from paper cut. So now that we've printed successfully, let's go ahead and click on the home button and start looking at the dashboard. Um, so here, as you can see on the header, we have trends that we'll be able to see, breakdown of network and environment. Further on down, we have forecasts where we'll be able to see how many reams of paper and toner we're projected to use. We also have top user activity, top printer activity. Also, which print jobs have been secured, the savings that we've done, and print convenience information. Now if we scroll back up, on the top right hand corner, we'll have more settings. Here for example on the profile, we can change the company name or organization name. Uh, right now it says not for sale demo, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that, change that to ACDI demo. So you can see it's pretty simple to do that. Also, if I need to invite another administrator, for example, if I want my personal email to for me to be able to access it as an administrator, I'm going to go ahead do that. Um, here I'm going to add a differentiator though. Uh, I'm going to put plus ACDI demo so that I know that this is for the ACDI demo uh, instance of Hive. So I'm going to go ahead and send that invitation and I should be able to receive that invitation and now log in with that email. And you could also see the different statuses of when you last logged in or if you've ever logged in. We also see terms of service, contact support, what's new, you know, so what has just come out, also what's gonna come out next, so things to look out for. Also on the drop down, we have demo mode for the new tab. So 
if you ever needed to show demo information to any of your customers, you would be able to open that up and kind of use that as an example instead of showing them your production environment, especially if you know you don't have any information on your production environment yet. Um, but going back here, we are also able to log out with those options in the top right hand side and language selection for the future. So now let's go ahead and take a look at configuration. So we have print security, reduced waste, easy printing. Under print security, we have three different breakdowns before printing, then during printing, and after printing. We also have a gamification score on the top right hand side. And if we look at before printing, we have access control. Clicking on that, we can see that we can add an access control rule. The rule to control who, where, and when someone can print. And we could either see deny printing or caution users before printing. We can customize a message. We can choose who this applies to. All users, selected users, users, all users but. Also, we can choose all printers or selected printers. And we can choose what times, you know, and we have a slider here too that will allow us to choose different times. We have also the remove button, the done button, and the add rule. And of course, once we're done, we can save changes or cancel. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and take a look at secure print release. Here, uh, basically mobile release options, choose how users can securely release from the, any printer. And basically there's four options. Choose from a list, uh, scan a QR code, NFC chip, and then also release code. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit more later, but for now, cancel. And we'll go ahead and move on to printing errors. Here, we'll see alert to prevent printing to a problem printer. So avoid printing when a printer is an error. Let's minimize use of inconvenience and reduce the chance of documents being accidentally collected by someone else when there is an error to be fixed. So we can choose off, uh, we can choose to warn the user or completely stop the user from being able to print. Also, we can customize the message, reset this to default. Again, we could save the changes or hit cancel. Now moving on to privacy and compliance, uh, basically thumbnail visibility here. Uh, basically, who could see it, admin and users, only the user that printed it, or no one. So just depending on your company policy. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. So now we're going to go over to watermarking and digital signatures. And under watermarking, if we turn that on, we'll see that certain short codes are going to be available to insert into the text of the watermarks. Also, digital signatures, if you haven't worked with that before, basically it says this is a unique signature that can be searched for in the print log to validate who printed a job, when and where. Uh, so basically this is a visible watermark, um, but it basically just has user information on there. And we could also choose how that information gets encrypted on the logs. Also under options, we can choose different options for the watermark and digital signature. Now if we move over to reduce waste, uh, basically, this section helps us reduce waste in being able to gently nudge or bluntly tell a user or find a clever way to tell a user to either do two-sided or black and white printing. Um, so for a gentle promote two-sided, if we turn that on, we have a slider that lets us decide how often we're going to nudge or suggest it to the customer, uh, have a set amount of pages of when we suggest it. We can also customize the message. Also here have sh short codes available. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. And you're going to see here in black and white, it's going to be just the same as in the two-sided promoted slider for how often, how many pages, customize message. Um, and on the blunt one, basically have the analogy of a teacher telling a student what to do, uh, tell our users what to do. Here, if we turn this on, basically on or off and then whether we do it silently or notify user that we're actually doing this um, same thing going to be in black and white on and on silent or telling then we have the clever one which basically says hey if there's too many pages um, you know we're going to stop them from printing that that many pages uh, if there's too many copies then 
we'll prompt them in the copies. Just make sure, hey, do you really want to print this many copies? Same thing for duplicate documents. If it seems like that's not correct. Also, if there's problems when printing or catch uncommon paper sizes, just make sure that that's what the customer wants to do or the user wants to do, I should say. We also have a gamification score. So as you promote more reducing waste, that will go up. Also under usability, we have manage admins, which we've seen before. We could also customize our welcome message. And if we look at team sign up here, uh, well, before we go into the auto-approve, let's go ahead and take a look at the QR codes. Um, so basically, if a user scans a QR code and they haven't been set up, uh, it could prompt something, but we need those QR codes first. So basically, if we want to print those, uh, we can create on create a label, or we can look at the touchscreen ID or QR. So set up digital QR codes. There's also NFC tags if you had writable NFC tags. But let's take a look at these QR labels. So basically these are things that you could print out and put in, you know, somewhere physically on the devices and they contain the QR code and the release ID code as well. Um, so when a user scans that, and if we put a domain on here, so for example, my domain is at acd-inc.com, basically you can choose how you're going to approve um, them, but basically you could have them auto approve. So that way the administrator doesn't even have to get involved. We also have the mobile and tablet printing section, which basically addresses iOS printing. And we, for iOS printing, we do need a super node. Um, and that super node does need to have a static IP address. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Chrome OS already enabled, Android already enabled for printing. But for iOS, we do need that edge node. Uh, now, why is it needed? Uh, let me go ahead and click on that link. So on most operating systems, we have to manage uh, to make things a little bit more intelligent so that they're able to discover print on the edge mesh. iOS is more constrained environment and we need to provide specific entry pointer profile. So that's going to be the reason for the requirement for the super node on that. Also, we have different hints uh, that are going to be coming soon. Uh, so look out for that. So we also have low toner alerts, which uh, if we enable that, we have a slider that basically will alert depending on when it goes down to a certain level. And we can customize the message, Hit cancel on there. We also have printer ID set up. Um, so again, if we wanna create those labels, we're able to do so like we looked at earlier. Uh, Auto printer discovery is also going to be how we control printer discovery and when they're published. Um, so there's going to be different settings here as far as how often it's going to be doing that scheduled uh, discovery of printers. Um, for the first 24 hours, you know, you might be getting several coming in sporadically, but after that, it'll be more scheduled and you have control over all of that here. Um, list do not publish by default is going to be our action item but we are as you could see that there's a lot of cuts coming soon we could also do discover now if we want to force it so have a different options um, but definitely want to visit back once those coming soon options come in moving on over to the explore area we see story tree job log activity log here if we look at the story tree Basically, it's just gonna give you an overview timeline of what you've been doing. Also notice that uh, this gets updated monthly, so right off the bat, you're not gonna have much information there. And job log, pretty self-explanatory. Here, we were able to see our jobs that came in. We see the thumbnail. Um, we see some meta information about the print job, who printed it, and when. And activity log is just gonna be able to show you what's going on from the web interface of the device, when new printers get discovered, uh, when administrators access it, when new administrators get invited, all of that information. So now we can move over to manage. And if we see users, printers, edge mesh, and add-ons. So if we go into users, pretty straightforward. We're able to see our user list here, user tile, 
So if we wanted to invite a user, we have a uh, invite user button there. And here we would be able to type in their email. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the email for one of my coworkers here. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and send the invite. Now, after the invite is sent, we will be able to see a new tile. And as you can see, it shows pending. Uh, so we'll be able to tell right away once they they have logged in for the first time. Also, if we go back to the invite user section, we can invite multiple users by comma separating the emails. And there are more advanced options with add-ons and um, you know auto accepting and all that. Uh, things that we'll look at a little bit here, later here for the add-ons. So moving on over to the printer section. Uh, here on the very top, we can see you know alerts, uh, toner notifications. We also see trending printers. We also have a search bar where we can search for printers either through IP address or name. I just happen to know the IP address of this one printer, this Konica. So I'm gonna go ahead, for example, rename it to something simpler, KMC3320i. And then you see name change, so that's pretty simple. Also, we have details that we can look at. So, for example, the name, we have uh, the IP addresses, uh, more information, last printed, first seen, QR code, NFC, uh, release code for this particular printer. We can also look at the QR code release and um, ID label that we could print out. So if I wanted to print that out, pretty simple. Just print it out like you would any other uh, web page. And here we have the QR code, which we'll be using here in a little bit as well. Analytics, uh, now obviously don't have much information going on because it's a brand new environment. We also have apps, full embed app. Uh, so if that's available, it's gonna go ahead and walk you through how to do the full embed. We also have light release app. Um, we have instructions there as well. Um, so pretty straightforward there. Now, if we do wanna do a manual setup, you will normally see an installation guide on a lot of these. So uh, if you want more information, a more technical deep dive of what's needed to do the embed, uh, you'll be able to go ahead, look into those install guides uh, or manuals and get all the information that you would need to embed those devices. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and look at advanced. Um, basically, advanced printer configuration. Um, auto is just gonna be default. Uh, we can customize that a little bit though, if we needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear this out so that we could see the whole list again. And as you can see, all of our printers are listed here. Now we can unpublish or publish that way. Uh, the users can only print to the ones that we want them to print to, even if they get discovered. So now that we've gone over printers, let's go ahead and go to print security and let's look at secure print release. Now here, I'm basically going to go ahead and turn off every single option except for uh, the QR release. I'm going to even turn off NFC. And basically, the QR code would force the user to walk up to the machine and scan a QR code with the Papercut app to release the job. I'm going to go ahead and save the changes. And here, later on, after we go through the rest of the dashboard, we'll take a look at what it's going to look like from the end user's perspective to release that job. Next, let's go ahead and go to the edge mesh. And on the edge mesh page, we are able to see that nodes combine to create a self-healing mesh on our network. Uh, that way we are able to keep printing. We have a button to where we could download the executable to set up another edge mesh. Uh, diagram here, uh, see how many super nodes we have, which are usually gonna be the ones with static IPs always on and on servers, standard nodes, which are gonna be most of your users, and we could even set up passive nodes. That'd be good for people that come in and out of the office. Here we're able to see that we have two standard nodes on our network, not any passive nodes right now. Now to promote one, pretty easy. Go to the vertical ellipses, promote. Now I have a super node here. And we also have a cloud node that's available. The cloud node is really what's gonna allow your users to print off network. If I wanna turn it on, click the toggle. Here is gonna be some information about the cloud node, how it works and what it allows you to do. Once you're done reading that, 
we can go ahead and hit enable. So now that we have our cloud node enabled, we can see that the cloud node acts as a secure gateway for remote off-network printing. And this is going to be just the general section of where you're setting up your nodes. And keep in mind, again, for your users that come in and out passive nodes. So going on to the last tab, the add-ons, these are going to be different things that you can add onto Papercut Hive. For example, they're working on the G Suite Sync. Um, there's also the Microsoft Azure AD Sync. We have the Power BI Advanced Dashboards along with the Power BI Connector. Um, we also have Service Office Billing Basic, which allows you to charge members in your service office by printing generated statements. Also even have Tableau Advanced Dashboards that are being developed as we speak. So keep in mind that there are going to be more and more of these add-ons that are going to be developed. So keep an eye out and visit this page every once in a while just to make sure that you're caught up with the newest available add-ons. After this, let's go ahead and navigate back to the print security page. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, we set up QR secure release. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like from the user's perspective of releasing a print job from the phone. So here I'm just going to be printing out two test pages as you see that I've been setting up. And so one, two test pages to the paper cut printer. And now let's go ahead and switch over to the phone and see what that looks like from the user perspective. So there I get one notification and then there's a second notification. I pull down my menu and I see that I have jobs waiting for me. So I click on that. That takes me to the paper cut app. I also can just go to the app regularly. I'm going to go ahead and select the first job and just to show you that we can do it. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And then on the second job, I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. And I want to look at, you know, different settings. I could change how many copies, whether it's in black and white, one sided, two sided. And I'm going to go ahead and print my document. And it wants to see my camera so that I could scan the QR code. And you see the QR code scans almost right away. So now it's printing. And now if I move over to the camera, I can see jobs printing out. And now that the jobs have printed out, let's go ahead and close this document. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the job log. Here in the job log, we'll be able to see uh, the job that we canceled. Also, if I go ahead and click on this top job, we're able to see all the metadata and everything for the print jobs that just came out. So now that we've seen how print jobs can be released and that Hive is tracking it, let's go ahead and go to printers and let's go ahead and embed a device here with the light app of paper cut Hive. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that device that I was looking at earlier and I'm going to go click on apps and I'm going to click on the light release tab and we could copy and paste this into command line, but there's an even easier way here on the one click install under the device admin. We'll type in the admin username and password. And as soon as we type in that information and continue, you see it runs all the commands for us and on the bottom I see installed successfully. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and you see we have that print release app on the device now. I'm going to click on that app and that should populate a paper cut hive welcome back screen. So let's go ahead and jump back to the admin interface and if we refresh this or get out of this page, let's see, if I refresh this and go back to the device. Click on apps. Okay. If I click on the light release app, I see that it's installed now and that it's ready to be used. We could reinstall and install just depending on what we needing to do from here. And I'm going to go ahead and print another job so that I could release it straight from the MFP. So I'm going to go ahead, click print. And after I that I'm going to go up to the MFP. Now remember, I do need a release code. So I'm going to click on here. And just as a reminder, this is the email that I got with my release code access code. So I'm going to go ahead and type in that access code number onto the MFP. And once I go ahead, type that in, I hit the green button to continue. 
and I'm able to see my job. So pretty simply, click on my job. I can go ahead, print the selected. And there you go. And okay, now there's nothing left for me to print. So I can go ahead, log out and look to the side on this tray. And there my job is, and it has printed successfully. Now going back, look at the job log. Let's just make sure that that is registering correctly. And there it is. All right, and we're able to see all the attributes and everything of that job in here. And with that, we are going to be wrapping up our presentation of Paper Cut Hive. I'd like to thank you personally for sticking through it and watching this video with us. And as always, please feel free to contact us. All of our information can be found at acd-inc.com. Again, thank you and be well.